uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for coming uh, tonight. This is Sunday night. This is the last night of the finals of the 19th annual Seattle Stand-Up Comedy Competition. It's, uh, this is our 21st show since November 4th. Uh, if you're not familiar with this event, it's a very big event. We start with uh, lots and lots of comedians, and we uh, perform six nights a week in different cities uh, every night for a couple of weeks, and we eliminate <coughs> comedians along the way, which is uh, weird when you eliminate them, because uh, I, I know when I did, I didn't even remember eating them. So, uh... <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> anyway, we are down to the finals. Not only down to the finals, we're down to the last night of finals. This is the fourth night uh, of finals. We have five comedians that have survived this process. They've already uh, uh, are have won a thousand dollars a piece. Minimum winner gets three grand. We're going to determine it tonight because actually after the first three nights of this thing, they're in a virtual tie. So uh, we're going to. It comes down to this final night. A lot of excitement. Going on, and you are here for it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, the comedians are going to be scored by judges, and uh, we've selected, uh, uh, you know, to the uh, given uh, the position to the highest bidder. And uh, uh, nothing crooked about this. This is just like the rest of the show business, ladies and gentlemen. It's extremely fair. But uh, uh, I think that's all we have to say. You're going to get to participate in the judging as well. There's a big audience response component. To the judging, your host will explain your part in it to you. It's a pretty long show. It's going to run about two hours, maybe a little bit more. At the end of the five contestants and the guest host, uh, we're going to have a special guest appearance by last year's winner, uh, Mitch Hedberg. And, uh, yeah. He was having a huge amount of success uh, in Hollywood. He has a big development deal with the Fox Network. He's now a regular on the uh, show, that 70s show. Uh, he has a film that just got accepted in the Sundance Festival so, um, uh, that he wrote and produced. So it, it's a, he's having a very uh, exciting time. He's given us a lot of credibility. We've been scouted by talent agents from uh, all over Hollywood and uh, a guy from Motley Terrace. But, uh, <laughs> so there's some gigs in here for someone, ladies and gentlemen, somewhere along the line. Someone who can work clean with a puppet. But, because uh, <laughs> uh, that's the way it fucking goes. So, uh, <laughs> I, I, I've said enough. That's all I have to say. Did I explain enough, Chris? Is that enough explanation? Oh, just keep going, Ron. You're doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage your host for the evening, a very talented comedian. You see him on uh, t the television show TV Dinners on PBS and uh, former winner of this event, Mr. Chris Alpine. Give him that. <laughs> Producer Ron, he's in a good mood. I've <laughs> been doing this for three fucking months, okay? I'm there. Ready to go. Hey, anyway, thank you very much for showing up tonight. You know, it's the, as he said, it's the fourth night. These guys are going for the big, the, the big bucks tonight and on all the recognition that goes with it. And, you know, it's TV, but it's still fun being live because, you know, you can tell so much about you just by where you choose to sit at a comedy show. See, the people sit up front, you guys, you guys are hip. You are now. You are happening. You are type A personalities. You have to be involved in life. Yes! <laughs> or you just don't know any better. <laughs> do you want to sit in the front row? I do, 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 I do. The people that worry me are you guys in the middle. You like to be close to the action, but not directly involved. You're the ones that yell shit out because you think you're anonymous. Hey, you suck! <laughs> Then there's some people in the back. You're just here to drink. You don't give a damn what the hell's going on up there. They're in the back. Like, yeah, yeah, funny shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where's the stripper going on? <laughs> you better take something off, pretty boy. <laughs> Love coming down to Swanee's Cafe. You can wear your hats and nerds. You're feeling with your hat now. It's cool. No one cares down here. We're casual. I was in the Midwest recently. They call baseball caps in the Midwest, they call them gimme hats. Because you'll walk into a gas station, go, hey, give me some gas, give me some oil. <gasps> Shit, give me one of them hats. <laughs> it's okay to wear a gimme hat indoors at Swanee's. Walk into some other club in Seattle with a hat on, they got out of their money, go, take that hat off. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that's rule. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'd love to see a doorman tell you guys here to take your hats off. You want to take that hat off? You want to do it for me? Asshole. It's hat night. Y'all gonna have a good time. 
But I, <laughs> we, we've been all over with this competition, although we didn't have to go to Spokane, thank God. <laughs> Spokane is not my favorite town. And we didn't have to go to Tacoma either. Tacoma is actually an old Indian word. It means, what in the fuck is that funky smell? <laughs> no, if you can find a really bad, you'll see it on. You'll be like, Seattle, yeah, what the fuck is that funky smell? I said, you can't say that on a map and no one will go there. You gotta pick a real man. I said, oh, here's a good one. How about, how about this place sucks? And they went, no, Linwood got that. Can't have that. <laughs> Casino, man, we're great. I'm not a gambler, right, right away. You, you look, you're not going to win. We just do the math. Get out of the car, look at the size of that building, look at the size of your wallet, throw your wallet in the building and back in the car, drive your ass home. That is your best bet right there. Crap. Play crap, the little dice game. You know why they call it crap, though? Because they can't advertise. Play shit! That's why. <laughs> Who's ever thrown a dice, lost a thousand dollars, went, oh, crap! <laughs> So peeved off. Where's Waddy and Lumpy? Let's get out of here, guy. Now, blackjack, that's the game. Play blackjack, play 21. You can get the odds pretty close to even with the house. How do you do that? Well, it's pretty easy. You count the number of face cards that are played out of the deck as the hands go along, so you can have an idea how many face cards are left in the deck, so you should know your odds whether you should take another card or not. Like your mind's a fucking computer! <laughs> Maybe they bring the deck out. How long is that deck now? And those th it's like six, eight feet long? Uh, four hundred and nineteen chairs. Three hundred and ninety-three queens. <laughs> okay, hit me. Bah, shit! Now oh, that's three tables down, sir. Thank you. <laughs> I almost got my money up to a slot machine. Got right up there, some little old lady came out of nowhere. Get away from that machine, the slot machine, get away from that machine! Where the hell did you come from? 1975. 1975. She had blue hair. Well, it was only half blue. I'm apparently sticking a cigarette in there so she can free up an arm and pull that hand on it. Okay, baby, rotate now, rotate, come on! I got a two dollar blackjack that will show you what a monster better I am. This woman wants to play with a check. Can I write a check? It's two dollars! I, I don't have any cash. Actually, two dollars isn't cash, it's fucking change! <laughs> That's my latest pet peeve is people who write checks for insignificant amounts of money. You're in a grocery line, you know. And by the way, ladies, it's called the express line to get you out of there in a hurry. It's not so that you get a chance to express every little thing that's happened to you. And your pathetic little life is last time you're in that. Cashier says to the woman in front of you, how are you today? Put oh. the frozen shit back. <laughs> Go get a sandwich. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I just don't want to die doing something stupid. This is my new theory. This is my new thing. Whatever you do when you die, that's what you have to do for eternity. So I don't want to be doing something dumb when my time's up and have to explain what a dipstick I am for eternity. I don't want to die like a mudslide. That to me would be embarrassing. What is the top speed in a mudslide? What is that? Two? If you can't outthink a mudslide, you are literally dumber than dirt. Come look at old boy standing on the front porch. Andy, 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 come here quick. And is that coming up the driveway? <laughs> Looks like you got yourself a mudslide there, Ed. Woo, maybe we had better run. Don't you worry, mudslides are real slow. We got hours and hours before it gets. Oh my gosh, it's got my feet. Help, help. <laughs> this is true. Six to eight people in America, six to eight people in this country get killed every year in vending machine accidents. What kind of a fucking moron do you have to be to get killed by a Pepsi machine? They're not real quick. Just for putting your money in, not getting what you want, then shaking until the heart falls on you, kills you. That's just not worth a quarter to me. Get my money, get my money! Oh, keep the money, keep the money! Then you'd have to go explain yourself to God. I can deny my son all oh, an activist. Yes, and what kind of an accident? He was offending with you. Go to hell! <laughs> 200 people a year get killed walking on the railroad tracks. Walking? On the railroad tracks? How is that even possible? 
Drink it. Nico Panya. Drink it pretty much come from that way or that way. And they make a lot of noise. Let me show you how to get away from a train. Train! Get your dumb ass off the tracks. Come on, I'm Polish and I was able to figure that out. But there's at least 200 people that we know of every year doing this. Train, run for it. It's getting out of Quick, everybody, duck into this tunnel. I think the dumbest people in this state that have to be the ones who live next to the rivers get flooded out every year. I swear I've seen the same guy on TV 10 years in a row. Every time I said, well, write the shit down. Get a big ass calendar, mark them days down. He's always surprised on TV. <laughs> we had a flood. Water just, just came out of nowhere. Really, maybe came out of the fucking river next to your house. You turn your fat head to the side there, man. You know, we can't get flood insurance. That's because you live on water, Jesus. No, you dumb shit. I think we should attack Canada. That's dumb, Pete. We should attack them. It's the easiest country in the world to get into. We pull up to the border, they ask you two questions. Do you have any illegal guns? Oh, no. Do you have any illegal drugs? Oh, no. Okay, come on in. And it makes you wonder who answers yes to these questions, doesn't it? Do you have any illegal drugs? Yeah. You guys are really good. Well, I guess I better go back now. We got one guy on our board. He, we are so overworked. We got one guy. He gave up. He's reading a book. Come on, everybody in America. Huddled masses. Everybody in America. Come on. People are treating themselves and we have drugs. Yeah, leave some for me. Get your ass in America. Come on, everybody. In. We're here to get a minute and how your little lady's doing that to himself. Come on in. Everybody in America. Everybody in. I think the dumbest guy in the world, though, has to be Saddam Hussein. What a moron this guy is. He starts a war like seven years ago. We kick his ass in like a week. He's starting another war. <laughs> Saddam, we just kicked your ass. Oh, was that you? <laughs> I saw the guy on TV. He was reviewing the troops. He was wearing a green camouflage suit. Iraq's a desert. There's not a tree in a thousand miles in Iran. Where the hell is he going to hide in a green camouflage suit? Oh no, here come the Americans quick, everyone that look like a tree. Well, I'll stop a tank. People are crazy, man, wherever you go, man. We're now like the worst driving area in the world. I can't believe this is bullshit. Can, you know, I, the show started a few minutes later. It's my fault. I took I-5 down from the north, and I forgot that apparently now Sunday is dickhead night on I-5. I didn't remember that. Why do we ever come to a stop on a freeway? Why? There's nothing on I-5 to stop. That's the whole concept of a freeway. You can drive that way. Go on, it's free! But every day we're stuck in rush hour traffic. You know what this means? There's got to be somebody somewhere at the front of the pack with clear freeway out in front of them going... <laughs> oh, left way, right way, left way, right way! Look at that. It is really old people that have nothing better to do with their time. Honey, it's rush hour. Fire up the Buick. We got people to piss off in town. <laughs> All right, enough of me. Let's get let's get rolling. We got a great show for tonight. We have five finalists. They went through all kinds of hell to get to this point. Oh, now you're gonna listen to them. You didn't even turn it on for me. Okay, you little prank guy. Okay, now the real people are coming. I'll turn the phone microphone. Get them on here. Oh yeah, that'll be real good. Joe, hope it fucking works. Yes. Yeah, that's a yes. Okay, good. Okay. Don't heckle these guys up because they're going to get a lot of riding on this thing. And as Ron mentioned very briefly, you have a very important part in this whole scoring thing. At the end of each person's act, if you go wild and cheer and crazy, you can tell them, oh, we love this guy, we love this guy. We, you sustain that. We will bring them back for an encore point. We add one full point to their evening score. These guys are, uh, are scored in like quarters and decimal points. So a full point is a very big deal. So if you really like these performers, let them know it, okay? So that's your part. So let's say I'm leaving the stage. You've seen me, you like me well, about as much as the, the phonograph lady did. Uh, one guy, okay, that's good, get him out, let's go, next one. But I want to hear what a mediocre one would sound like. What would that sound like? You know, that's pretty good for me. What would a really good one sound like? Come 
That's good. That's all my ego can take. Okay. All right. So you guys ready to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Let's get going. This is the last night of the finals. Please give a nice Swanee's Comedy Underground welcome to Mr. Tracy Tufts. Tracy. <laughs> I'm just playing. This is going to be awesome. I like doing these live comedy shows like this. It's pretty fun for me. I'm uh, not a big fan of the live musical concerts, though. I don't like those because uh, what will happen is, is you'll get your favorite song on the CD. <laughs> and then uh, you go, all right, I'm heading out to the concert. My group's in town. <laughs> and then they start doing your tune. And you're like, all right. <laughs> then they go, okay, now everybody put your hands above your head. You're like, I don't remember that from the CD. You know? And then they're like, all right, now everybody sing. Yeah. yeah, and you're like, what the hell are you doing, man? You're turning my song into 20,000 drunks doing karaoke at the Dome. You know, I don't start my shows off. I don't go, you know what? Two Jews walk into a bar. <laughs> so I don't even listen to that popular music anymore. No, I'll, like, I'll listen to like the nature stuff, you know? Like the rushing water makes you go pee. <laughs> and the uh, whale song, that stuff kicks ass. <laughs> Except for then when you get that favorite song stuck in your head, you sound like an idiot when you're singing it, you know? You're like... <laughs> Friends are like, what the hell are you doing? It's a new group, Shamu. <laughs> the whales, they rock live, though. They don't pull that crap with the mic. You see the whales live, and you're like, all right, man. <laughs> you try and salute them with the lighter, you know. What the hell? I want to salute you, but I can't. <laughs> yeah. So this is a pretty good group, an attractive crowd. I get a little nervous in front of attractive people. Sometimes I'll see an attractive woman like yourself. And I'll think to myself, I'll go, well, God, Tracy, why don't you just get up enough nerve, you know, and say something to her. But then I'll just turn the page. <laughs> Unless they're all stuck together or something like that. You know? I won't put them back on the rack. Wouldn't want to get fired, you know that? <laughs> Titanic is out on the video now. That's a beautiful story. It's about a buxom redhead, and she gets out on the end of the boat, and she's about ready to take a header into the ocean, and then her Prince Charming comes along, and, oh, no, don't do that, I love you. <laughs> and that happens to me all the time. I'll see a psychotic woman about ready to take her life, and I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I've got to get with that, you know. <laughs> don't jump, don't jump, I need a date, you know. <laughs> She'll just jump. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll tell you a little bit, bit about myself. When I grew up, I had a stepmother. And it was very difficult because I didn't know what I should call her. I didn't know if I should call her mom or call her by name or just Satan. <laughs> and I didn't think that she liked me very much because whenever she'd take me to the store to get me candy, she'd only get me candy with names like Licorice Whip 
her jawbreaker, her balls of shit. And there are certain situations in a step family that you don't know how to react to. Like one time I was in the bathroom and I saw my stepsister there naked. And I was like, stepsister, naked lady. Stepsister, naked lady. Say you're sorry, sell the picture. <laughs> I'd do the mischievous things as a kid, you know, like you'd, you'd have cigarettes in your room and your parents would come in there and they'd find them so they'd make you smoke a cigar. Or they'd come in there and they'd find a beer so they'd make me drink vodka straight. So I just showed them where my stash of Playboys were. <laughs> and they wheeled in Farrah Fawcett. <laughs> Fawcett joke, and I stand by that. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I'm sorry I didn't get all spruced up like everyone seems to look nice. I'm, I don't like to go into the stores, you know, and shop. Um, I think that the stores are not our friends. They try and trick you, you know, with the names of their stores, like the good guys, you know, and best. And they're out of business now. They were the best. And then, like, uh, Super Mall, you know, the Super Mall. I think that stores need to be more realistic with their names. They need to have stores with names like not in stock. <laughs> no, or broken shit. <laughs> or uh, the snobby bitch. <laughs> hut. The snobby bitch hut. <laughs> Victoria's Secret. I know what their secret is. Their crap looks a lot better on their mannequins than it does on your own girlfriend. <laughs> I look pretty good in it, though. Um, I went to their that Super Mall's food court, and they had... Uh, like, there, the names in the food court, they had, like, King Seafood and Mr. Wu's Chinese Gourmet, you know, and they're serving their craps in steam trays, and <laughs> they had sneeze guards, you know, Gourmet. And then uh, they had Flamers. That was really good. Right after Flamers, I went over to Fudge Packers for dessert. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want the brownies. You know. <laughs> That's a fudge packing joke, and I stand by that. <laughs> I'm going to do an impression for you real quick, okay? This is going to be Jerry Seinfeld making fun of the phrase, happy as a clam. Okay, here goes. <laughs> were they thinking? When they thought of the phrase, happy as a clam, <laughs> did somebody walk down to the end of the beach, dig up a clam, and say, that clam is happy? <laughs> See, not a joke, just an impression, but I think it's good. <laughs> Homer Simpson making fun of that same phrase, okay? What were they do <laughs> when they thought of the mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You guys, um, you ever been driving? <laughs> huh? So you ever been driving and you get a speeding ticket? And then right after you get the speeding ticket, you get um, real nervous about getting pulled over and getting another ticket. So you get busy looking around for cops. Well, you get so busy looking around for cops that you end up 
rear-ending somebody and causing an accident, and then the cops come and ask you what causes it, and you go, you. <laughs> I was um, driving down in Portland, and uh, I did a U-turn in an intersection with a school. And uh, I got pulled over, and she came up to the side of my car, and she wasn't even a real cop. She was a school cop, you know? So my thing was like... <laughs> and uh, <laughs> She goes, around here, we like to set a good example for our children. You know, like all the kids were hanging their heads out the window, seeing me do the Yui, and now they're all hopping on their bikes, going out front. <laughs> you know? And then... That's not how she sounded, though. She kind of sounded like the, around here, like that. Now I remember. That's right. And she was kind of, she was hairy. She was completely covered in hair, like one of those full-body Muppets, you know? And so she was like this, around here, we like to set a good example for our children. I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, you know, I'm waiting for her to pick up my car and start eating it, you know? <laughs> Stupid Muppet bitch. <laughs> Sometimes I'll distort the truth. And, uh, um, and then, like, the cops, they'll make mistakes, you know. Like, um, one time I was driving in the carpool lane, and the cops pulled me over because they couldn't see my girlfriend's head. <laughs> She's tying my shoe. <laughs> That's a blowjob joke, and I stand by it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean to do, do the genital stuff, because normally it always comes back at the males, you know? It's never the other way around. You never hear a guy go up to a girl and go, you know what? You're too shallow. Whenever we have sex, it's like this. <clears throat> I'm forming a callus on the end of my penis, and I can sew with the damn thing. <laughs> yeah. My girlfriend, she'll ask me these hypothetical questions. She'll go, Tracy, would you still love me if I were fat? Go, oh, I don't know, would you still love me if my penis was three inches shorter? <laughs> don't be silly, because then it would be inverted. <laughs> and that would stink. Because then, whenever you masturbate, it'd be like... <laughs> Inverted masturbation joke, and I stand by that. <laughs> so there. <laughs> yep. I went to Fantastic Sam's to get my hair cut, and I walked in there, and the hairstylist starts cutting my hair, but as she's cutting my hair, she's brushing up against me the whole time. She's like, Cutting and rubbing, cutting and rubbing, cutting and rubbing. I'm going, God, I came in here for a haircut and I'm getting a couch dance. <laughs> Plus, I got this big bib on, you know, and I'm afraid I'm going to literally pitch a tent. <laughs> Tracy under the big top. Shortest show on earth. She keeps cutting and rubbing, cutting and rubbing. She goes, well, that's it. And I go, well, I think I'd like it a little shorter. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then I saw this uh, documentary on the sea cucumber. And what the sea cucumber does is it'll swim through the water and then when it's approached by a predator, it'll dump its innards into the water, then the sea cucumber will swim away. And I always thought that uh, men were lucky that women didn't have that ability when we were asking them out on dates. You know, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I signed up for a martial arts class, and uh, it's pretty good. The first thing that they taught me was the key op. And what the key op is, is it's a loud concentration of energy that you shout out at your opponent when you're about to attack them. And I thought, well, I could do pretty good at that. So normally I'm used to doing that, but it's just while I'm being attacked, you know? <laughs> Do that. And then uh, the next thing that you learn is the is the forms, and it's a choreographed form with hidden self-defense techniques. And so I'm a pretty quick learner, so I thought of my own. And basically, it starts from here, then from here you go to here, then you go to here, then you go to here, then you go to here. <laughs> Yeah. They're gonna teach me how to, you know, shoot fire and shit out of my hands eventually, I know. I saw Mortal Kombat. <laughs> I'm gonna get ready to go now, and I'm gonna end with Homer Simpson sings Red Hot Chili Peppers, and I stand by that. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I don't have a partner. Sometimes I feel like, put out your lighters, bitches. <laughs> My only friend, mm, chili peppers. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm going to trace that out. than in the 
fresh tragedy of the bus. How about, uh, how about religion? Surely we can all get on board with religion. Yeah. I think personally, I think religion's getting a bad rap, mostly nowadays from these street preachers, you see. These guys at the mall or the Apple Expo or the Bill Gates' God Conference, whatever the fuck you people do on the weekend. You know what I'm talking about? Always one guy with a Bible and one tooth claims to be speaking for Jesus. How come the guy speaking for Jesus always appears to be the least qualified to be speaking for Jesus? You know what I'm, I'm speaking for Jesus! Look, Clem, um, I don't know what JC's looking for in a spokesman, all right, but I gotta believe dental plan's gotta be right up there. And maybe a third grade education, at least. Just because it's gotta be tough to spread the word of God by quoting the picture Bible. I'm not a big fan of the Jesus Loves You bumper sticker that I see everywhere, especially since it's always inevitably plastered on some Volkswagen product mired in the left lane going down I-5 doing about 40 miles an hour. I just want to pull up next to that guy and go, hey, look, I'm glad Jesus loves you, all right? Because everyone else on the planet thinks you're an asshole. Get that rusty heap of Jesus-loving Volkswagen bullshit over to the right. Let me give you a tip. Right wing, right lane, buddy. That's the fucking program, all right? Jesus does not love you. If Jesus loved you, he would have given you a V8, all right? What do you, what do you got under the hood? The fucking Easter Bunny? Get that shit over. Perhaps, I'm thinking, if he spent a little less time in church, a little more time on the road with the rest of us, he'd realize the left lane is for people who have a fucking life to live. That's from the Book of Our Love, 3-14, right there. Let me find out what kind of creature I'm dealing with here at the underground. By applause, how many people, when it comes to the origin of mankind, believe in the cold, hard, scientific fact of evolution? Charles Darwin, let me hear it. Good to hear those opposable thumbs working. And now, by round of applause, how many people believe in Adam and Eve, the Bible? Round of applause. Let me hear you. Um, I don't want to rain on anyone's parade for 40 days and 40 nights, but uh, Noah's Ark, for instance, didn't fucking happen, all right? First of all, it's rained here for 40 days and 40 fucking nights, and I have not had to build an ark, A. And B, there's no way that God would hire this guy, Noah, who, you know, let's be honest, non-union, basically, you know, scab labor, <laughs> to build a stupid boat that had to be twice the size of the Titanic for two of everything. Are you kidding? All right, forget about everything. Let's just talk rodents for a second, ladies and gentlemen. There are over 40,000 species of vermin roaming the world today, all right? If evolution never happened, they all had to be on that boat two times four. 80,000 rats on board Noah's Ark, really. All right, you tell me in the year zero where Noah, for 80,000 rats, is going to somehow find 40,000 of those little plastic water bottles for those buckets. <laughs> saying no one didn't exist, maybe he had a small bay liner or something, but I just can't picture God turning this guy into like doorman at the only party in town for the animals, because if that happened, once word leaked out, it was the ark or die, every animal on the planet's trying to get on board. Yeah, we're here, finally, mountain lion, table for two, please. Somewhere near the gazelles, if we can work that out, that'd be <laughs> see this though. Ultimately, the creationism people, you might really be the smarter of the two groups because even though your belief is founded on religion, which is, you know, shame, guilt, fear, lunacy, um, if you're wrong, when you die, you know, big fucking whoop, what's the worst that can happen? Reincarnation? Come back as a guinea pig for the lunacy of your belief. If I'm wrong, how long am I waiting to get inside the pearly gates? Well, well, everybody, look who wants into heaven now. If it isn't the Noah's Ark funny boy. Well, where's all the fucking comedy now, Mr. Water Bottle, Mountain Lion? <laughs> the only guy spending all of eternity with a big pair of boots and a shovel, cleaning up Noah's poop deck for the rest of my life. A lot of racism going on in the world. Oh, yeah. Bust and the religion seem to have worked so well. Let's smoothly work 
work in racism for a moment, see if we can. Rip the jar open on a big old can of fucking bunny here. <laughs> being directed, of course, these days at the illegal alien community. Personally, I don't get it, I'll be honest. I'll tell you what the fucking problem is, you little liberal comedy fucker. These illegal aliens are coming here, they're draining the economy. Really? Last time I saw them, they were over in Yakima picking apples for five cents a day. Draining the, who else do you think is going to? Teamsters? Oh, that'll turn the economy around. 10,000 fat, hairy, sweaty, lazy white guys in a union making 40 bucks an hour. Oh, that'll turn things around. Come on, boys, get those wife beater tank tops on. Let's go! Out to the fields. Just as soon as you're all done filing workman's comp for that sunburn, we're going to turn this fucking economy right around. Unless your idea of turning the economy around is putting apples on fucking layaway, which is what's going to happen when the Teamsters take over. I say we leave them alone. No, because these fuckers, I'll tell you something else they do. They don't pay any taxes. Really? What, no sales tax on fuzzy dice? <laughs> I'll tell you something, if it wasn't for illegal aliens here in America, the entire carpeted dashboard industry, gone. <laughs> well, there's no room for these fuckers. America's crowded. Really? Have you ever driven to Spokane, Washington? <laughs> it is one shit brown hill after another, all right? There is plenty of room for these people. I say we bring them all over and make Moses Lake the promised land. That's what I say. <laughs> My favorite argument, though, the classic. Well, they're taking away our jobs. What about that? Well, thank fucking God. <laughs> because if your job performance is so crappy, you can't even beat out some guy who snuck over here a week ago in somebody's glove box. <laughs> can't speak a lick of English. If you can't fucking beat out that guy for a job, please, do America a favor and quit and just give it to him. <laughs> Absolutely. 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 You think some computer programmer's really worried about losing his job to Pepe, the illegal alien? <laughs> Give me the computer job, Holmes. I can do it. <laughs> Fuck you, WW Dot. Hit the stupid key or something. Let's go. <laughs> you guys not taking anybody's job. Everybody in. That should be the fucking policy here in America. Right. Absolutely. All those Cubans, the Haitians, all of them. You ever see that footage on the news? Holy smokes. It's like 80 miles of freezing cold, shark infested waters from Cuba to Florida. Turn on the news, there's 15 of these fuckers crammed inside a styrofoam cup trying to make it here. <laughs> Blow, I say we gotta get there, fucker! <laughs> <laughs> Holy smokes, we could use some of that dedication here in America. <laughs> I'd like to be a woodshop teacher in Cuba, by the way. That's gonna be a strange thing. <laughs> Why, Manny, that's a beautiful coffin you're building for yourself there. It's not a coffin, it's a boat. Yeah, yeah. Well, you say tomato, I say tomato. It's... You get an F this quarter, Manny. You and your 85 brothers are not making it to Miami inside a spice rack, which is what you're building. <laughs> and see, everyone tries to cloud the argument. They'll tell you it's about the jobs or the economy or the taxes. It's all bullshit. It's just racism. It's just white people don't want Mexicans and black people here. It's just the fucking way it is. Not to say that racism is an all-white issue. Oh, no. Plenty of these minority races running around where they find racism everywhere. Check this out, homie. How come when you play chess, right, how come the white pieces always get to move first, but the black move last every time? That's the man keeping the goddamn black chess pieces down. <laughs> It's just chess, brother. Calm down, right? <laughs> Funniest example I've ever seen of racism being used inappropriately? O.J. Simpson trial. Johnny Cochran grilling Mark Furman about being a racist idiot. Now, Furman is a racist, but the argument that Cochran used had nothing to do with racism. You mean to tell me, Mr. Furman, that you can somehow distinguish the difference 
between black people and white people simply by listening to their voices. You can tell that difference. <laughs> yeah? Really? Let me ask you another question. <laughs> I laughed so hard when I saw it. You know what I mean? No, that's not racism. That's just people talking differently. Does that mean I'm a racist? Just because I can tell by the way they talk that someone from San Antonio is a goober? No, that's not. <laughs> See, it's all about equality in this country. That's why we get all bent out of shape with the illegal aliens and the affirmative action. When we think somebody has an unfair advantage on us, that's when we fucking start making laws and pissing everything off. And I'm all for equality, but I think we need to do a better job of defining it before we start dishing it out. I'm referring, of course, to my very popular campaign to abolish all handicapped parking. <laughs> hear me out. I know when that first hits the ears, ooh, that's a little fucking rough. But hear me out. I'm all for equality. Absolutely, especially with the handicap. I will fight to the death for wheelchair-accessible public buildings. That's equality. Braille? Absolutely. Put Braille on my ass so blind people know it's my ass. That's totally fair. <laughs> but preferred parking? That's not equality. You want equality, you can have it, but you get the whole package, all right? It's not all fun and games. You want to park in the front row and you want equality? Hey, no problem. Wake up early, get there first, all right? That's what we do. That's equality here in America. Nothing more aggravating. You pull up to the post office, five spots in the front row not being used. I can't use any of them because I don't have the little blue sticker on my car. So now, pouring rain outside, I gotta go park in Afghanistan and break out my fucking kayak so I can go mail a letter. <laughs> Trust me, if you can drive to the post office in your $40,000 modified van using a straw, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can hump it those last 10 yards to the blue box at the restaurant. <laughs> about it, I mean, if God wanted these people to be out wandering around, he wouldn't have made them all gimpy anyway, would he? <laughs> Stay home, eat popcorn, God hates you! <laughs> Going down swinging, baby! <laughs> so what's the solution in this country to all these problems? I'll tell you what the solution is. We elect Jack Kevorkian as our next fucking president. That's what we do. <laughs> That's the fucking genius of the whole thing right there. All right, maybe when you hear the list of people I've compiled that need to be euthanized by our next president, Jack Kevorkian, maybe I can swing the tide my way. First group of people we need to get rid of here in America, any guy who wears the cowboy boots and tucks the pants inside the cowboy boots. Gone. Euthanasia, the perfect solution in this country for anyone whose culture prohibits them from bathing regularly. <laughs> the shower is not stealing your soul, Haji. Use it once in a while, all right? <laughs> I, don't, I don't really care how many days you had to hump it in the desert with a camel, all right? You're in America now. Shower up or die, stinky. That's the fucking law. <laughs> Euthanasia, the perfect solution in this country for anyone still spending money on those godforsaken beanie babies. <laughs> Gone. Absolutely. Come on, it's beans and cloth, all right? It's not heroin. <laughs> People dying of starvation all over the world, you're plopping your last 200 bucks down trying to find a stuffed yak named Wilbur. Quit it! <laughs> Euthanasia, the perfect solution in this country, for anyone with one of those Honor Student of the Week bumper stickers. It's always on the back of a minivan with a carpool mom full of kids doing about 40 miles an hour. Look, nobody gives a rat's ass your retarded kid somehow learned to count to four at Booger Eater Elementary School, all right? Hey, maybe one day he can teach you to count to 65. Now step on the fucking gas! It's right there! It's the skinny one on the right! I'm a little worked up about the slow drivers. Euthanasia, the perfect solution in this, in this country for all country western music singers. Gone. Absolutely. 
I would rather I would rather drag my sack through ten miles of broken glass than listen to five more seconds of that little Leanne Shania Grimes, whatever the fuck her name is. Jesus Christ. I don't know, but let's find out how I live without you for a minute. <laughs> and while we're waxing child prodigies, euthanasia, the perfect solution for anyone in this country with the last name Hanson. God. <laughs> oh, I know you might not think you're related. And, you know, maybe you're not, but it's just way too dangerous at this point. We, we can't take that chance. The Hansons with their hit single, Where's the Love? Dude, you're 13. Check your hand. That's where the love is. <laughs> I don't think America needs a song about love from a bunch of kids who still think the G-spot is that space next to Gumdrop Falls and Candyland. <laughs> All right, a couple more. Euthanasia, the perfect solution in this country for any American who refuses to speak English correctly. How are we going to get the aliens to speak English? We can't even pull it off. Referring, of course, to anyone trying to pronounce the word wolf, comes out whoop. <laughs> oh, you know who you are, the whoop people out there. Hey, there's four letters in the whole word, all right? Let's try and catch all four of those. I don't know what it is with mispronunciations in this country. We can't fucking pull it off. I don't mean mistakes. I mean people who consistently say the same thing wrong over and over. Espresso, library, birthday. It's my birthday. <laughs> no, it's your fucking death day is what it is. Wrestling. Anyone who watches wrestling, by the way, God. Fucking New World Order. Yeah, there's a New World Order, and you're not in it, all right? That's the New World Order. And the last group of people, actually the last person who needs to be euthanized by our next president, Monica Lewinsky. Her and that stupid blue dress. All she had to do was swallow. She would have saved us $40 million. That's my time. Thank you very much today. Rewind, right? Great, yeah, well, good for you. <laughs> so, 
So, so far you've got what? 10, 15 seconds you can use on the air? Good. Yeah, that'll come in here. Are they paying you for this? Yeah, they're paying you for this. Yeah, we got 30 seconds. All right. And then, but here's that tab, $155. What the hell is that? I had to bring a technician. <laughs> the stakes are heavy. So, what? are you a producer up there? Well, what's your name? Wendy? Wendy the producer. I do. <laughs> and what do you produce? Oh, you do? With that attitude, I can understand why. It's an attitude. You don't live on the east side, do you? Good for you. I hate the east side. I don't know why. It, it, so, Bellevue has a floating bridge. Now think about that. The rest of the world has bridges built out of concrete and steel, but not Bellevue. Oh, Arts just float. <laughs> just float on the water. A couple of years ago, someone actually tried to kill themselves by jumping off the floating bridge. It's two feet off the water. Did Mr. Yuppie have a bad day? <laughs> what? The beaver won't be on the shop until Thursday? Can't take the pressure. I'm going to kill myself. Ooh, that's cold. Ooh. Well, 911, I'll be in the hot tub. Don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. And I do want to apologize to the women if I've offended you somewhere along the line tonight. I'm sorry. As you can tell, man, I don't really mean it. You just have to say it now when you talk in public or they'll sue you. I found that out the hard way. I said something to a woman once in a show. She wrote me a letter of complaint. Oh, that'll stop me. I got this great big long letter from this irate woman. She goes, I've never been so humiliated and embarrassed in my life. I don't know a comedy show to have a good time. Not to be ridiculed by some man. <laughs> like I read the whole letter. But my agent said, hey, you write her back and apologize. So I did. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to humiliate you and embarrass you. You were doing a fine job all by yourself. There you go. And I never heard from her again. Oh, women are great, man. Well, can we talk about women drivers? Just good moment, Tito. Would that be okay, ladies? Ladies, can we? Perfect. I'll do it then. Thank you. I think every man in here, every man who's a real man, wants me to talk about women drivers. Don't we, men? Yeah. yeah. So you almost got your, yeah, ah! So you're starting to get your, no, yeah, Some of the women are digging in their purses. Oh, all right, you can have one of your testicles back, but just one. I only have one thing to say about women drivers. Women drivers are actually better drivers than men. Women are better drivers than men because women can put on makeup at 60 miles an hour. Looking in the rear view mirror, talking on the cell phone. Who's driving the car? Oh, don't worry, get my knee on the wheel. Oh, hell, I'm not worried, I'm jumping out. <laughs> Women are amazing. Boy, my last uh, my last relationship, this woman wanted to save a relationship. We're breaking up. She's throwing knives at me one night. The next night she goes, let's save our marriage. Okay, what, the circus call? I don't want to be with you. So she made me read that book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. What a piece of shit this is. Oh, I got a better title for that. Men Are From Earth and Women Are Their Fucking Minds. There you go. Where do women come up with this stuff? You know, the whole premise of the book is that men and women look at the same situations in life differently. Oh, there's a surprise. <laughs> of course men look at the world differently than women do. We have a penis in the way. <laughs> we can't see where we're going. That's why we're always driving around lost. <laughs> Honey, where are we? I can't tell. I, I can't see out the window. My penis is so huge. It's huge. I can't see <laughs> to be here. Are you excited, men? Are you excited, men? Yeah. No, I'm pitiful. Okay, women, are you excited, women? Yeah. That's what I like to hear, a bunch of women faking it for me. It just <laughs> makes me feel right at home. Yeah, it does. Reminds me of the old ex-wife. Yes, it does. That's very nice. So, stuff going on. Just stuff going on with me. Uh, oh, I pierced my nipple. Fishing. I was out there by the lake trying to get a tan, and I don't do that. And I was swinging that bait home, and that hook just, choo, right in the nipple. Did a little pain dance. I got a nipple. I got a nipple. It's a keeper. And uh, 
Now I know how the worm feels, though. Oh, yeah. I accept worms don't have nipples. <laughs> I don't think they do. Am I wrong here? I don't know. <laughs> if they do have nipples, they probably wear them off all that crawling around. <laughs> it's nuts. Did you guys know that worms are asexual? Did you know this? This is true. Worms are asexual, which means if there's like a worm over here, and he got all excited, kind of, you know, aroused. He'd be like, ooh, ooh, pregnant. <laughs> it's a good thing people aren't like that. <laughs> I'd have a lot of kids. <laughs> I would, uh, I think some of you would too, but. <laughs> ah, speaking of nipples. <laughs> Other day I'm in a department store and I saw a mannequin with nipples, just nipples on the mannequin. You can see them right through the blouse there. So I just kind of looked both ways and I just kind of reached up there and, <laughs> and they kicked me right out of there. Because <laughs> it wasn't a mannequin. Uh, so, so don't do that. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, and if you do that, wash your hands first because you get chocolate on a blouse, you gotta buy it. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Just a mannequin foreplay tip <laughs> for you. So other shit happening. Oh, other day, this is driving along, and I just drifted right off the road. I, I drifted right off of there because I was trying to fish an M&M &M out from underneath my crotch. <laughs> Kinda lost track of what I was doing there. Because <laughs> M&Ms are good. <laughs> they are, they're delicious. They're chocolate with a candy coating. Melt in your mouth, not in your hands. <laughs> They'll melt in your crotch. And it's just warm down there, and, and it's like hard to keep your dignity. You're like, hi, Ben Washburn, stand up comedian. Yeah, you got a piece of poo stuck in your mouth. <laughs> oh, that's not poo. <laughs> that's good. It's just. It's an M&M. &M. Yeah, you got seven of them stuck to your ass. Do you guys ever walk around with food stuck to your body and then no one tells you? Not even your best friend's like, oh, we didn't want to embarrass you. Oh, it's a little late. Walk around with half a hoagie hanging on my ass. Really big guys checking me out and drooling. And I'm getting all flattered. I saw this really big guy the other day hopped out of a minivan. He had nine Skittles stuck to his ass. <laughs> Whole rainbow of colors. <laughs> I didn't tell him, though. <laughs> just sat staring at his Skittle-covered ass, just thinking, <laughs> what a waste. <laughs> Skittles are delicious. You guys like Skittles? Yeah, Red Skittle fans? <laughs> you guys are just bullshitting me, weren't you? <laughs> Purple Skittles? Anyone? A few. Yellow? Yellow? Yeah, no one's eating those little urine colored shit. Do you guys ever have Starburst fruit juice? Any? Yeah. Okay, there you go. Those are good. I, I start salivating right when I open them. Are you that way? I can't even get the paper off. And I'm like, whoa! I have a little premature ejaculation in there. So it's just, whoa! Do you ever have someone offer you a Starburst fruit juice and it's a yellow one? Is that. Ooh, thanks a lot. Big sacrifice. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Piece of yellow shit. And you know it's in that square package you have to eat in order. So you know they waited for that piece of shit to come up. Like, ooh, Starburst? Oh, yeah, thanks. Ooh, ooh. Mouthful of spit, nowhere to go. I had a really weird eating experience the other day. This is true. So I'm eating a hot dog. Okay. Eating my hot dog. And I ran out of wiener. Ran out of wiener. All I had left was just two pieces of bad bread. Just like bad bread and ketchup is a ketchup sandwich. And I thought, I would never sit down and make one of these. But I ate it. I ate it. Because technically it's a hot dog. Because it folded in there, you know? So I caught the yellow light. Woo! It's a hot dog. There's definitely a time limit on a ketchup sandwich, you know. I'm, you're not going to come back later. Ooh, ketchup sandwich. You're not on the same page at all. No, so this is what I catch myself doing with the, with the hot dog now. I 
actually catch myself doing that. You ever do that with a hot dog? <laughs> Shut up, Beth. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm looking at a whole ketchup sandwich. I'm pushing the wiener into, the, I'm monitoring my wiener to bun ratio. <laughs> they don't want a ketchup sandwich. Sometimes I have a big old drink in my hand and I'll use my tongue. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. I'm French kissing my hot dog so as to avoid the ketchup sandwich. Okay, apparently you don't eat hot dogs here. I love hot dogs. They're proof that we, like the American Indian, use everything. We're not throwing shit away. We're in there with a snow shovel. <laughs> Great, it's a euphemism, really, for shit we would have thrown away. It's a lot of euphemisms with food, because eating, I think, makes us uncomfortable, because the whole process of killing animals and eating them, we feel bad, so that's why we have words to make it sound better. For instance, instead of saying cow, we say beef, because it just sounds better. Think about it. Cow, it's what's for dinner. <laughs> Holy shit! Sounds bad. So you have to have euphemism so eating sounds good. Like, what's for breakfast? Oh, we have thinly sliced pig, then a couple little chicken placentas, mm -hmm. oh, and a big tall glass of white liquid from a cow's tit. Got white liquid from a cow's tit? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. They're grossing you out now. I had another weird eating experience. The other day I'm eating pizza and it was too hot, so I think, oh, I'll cool it down with my mouth. It's thinking. Just stick in my mouth. I'm ah, trying to cool it off. I can't. I pull it out of my mouth. It's chewed up, covered with spit. I look at it. I go, gross. <laughs> Which was very weird because a second ago, great taste in food. Now it's gross looking garbage. See? Again, the line between garbage and food. So close. And I thought, why don't I eat the pizza? It's weird. It's a puzzle. A conundrum. But finally, I figured out it's the temperature of the spit. It is. Hot spit's good. Cold spit's bad. It's true. You ever go to spit and it's like a little thicker in your thoughts, like a, a loogie on a bungee cord. It's like, whoa, down there. Do you suck that back in? No way. Went out, it's staying out. You want to knock out, you know, cold spit's bad. You know what else? Spit can be sexy, too. This is true, huh? Spit's sexy. You're kissing along there. Get the tongue going, the spit back and forth. Very sexy. As long as the spit stays in the airlock chamber. <laughs> so think about it. What if you separate your mouth just by like two inches and spit? <laughs> Not sexy. <laughs> Don't do that. You won't get lucky. You'll get your ass dumped. Is what <laughs> there. That grossing you out. Here's something grosser. This is the grossest thing I caught myself doing the other day. I actually caught myself cleaning my toilet with my urine stream. <laughs> you know, you do, there's this ring of mildew there, and I'm cleaning it off with urine. I'm washing with urine, holy shit. And I'm all excited because I got a lot of water pressure this morning. I'm going to make a big old dent in this mess. Because you got to have water pressure. It's not like a garden hose. You can't put your thumb over the end of it. And I do it everywhere I go. I clean the urinals in all the buildings. I'll knock down a couple of hairs. Then I go in and hit that little biscuit. Just freshen up the air. Just trying to do my part. I'm a walking maintenance man. <laughs> so it's good to come to Seattle. This, this place is pretty cool. I have one question. What in the hell happened to your streets? Holy shit. What'd you do? Smoke pot and lay out the city? These one ways that meet in this city. What the hell happened there? One way is, oh, it's a two way. No, no, it's a one way. No, it's a two way. It's a one -way. How are they making that decision, huh? Hello, boss. Yeah, we ran out of that yellow wine paint again. <laughs> Why don't we just use the white? Down in South Tacoma, I saw a yield sign at a railroad crossing. <laughs> okay, you're not laughing. I'm nervous. <laughs> and holy shit, yield to a train. Something I took for granted, you know. <laughs> Talk about stating the obvious. Why don't we have signs in the restroom there, you know? Wipe your ass. <laughs> after you have completed your bubble. Oh, after! Oh! Makes sense now. <laughs> I am excited.
inside though, because see, I'm from Utah, so this is like bitching. It's awesome. From Utah, it's like a, you, yeah, you too. Okay, I, my wife's here with me. Other ones at home. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I brought her too. <laughs> we dropped all the kids off with my fiance, and we came on. <laughs> I'm just bullshitting you. Yeah. I'm, no, I'm serious about being from Utah. Grew up Mormon. A lot of people go, ooh, that's weird. Growing up Mormon. It's not that weird. There's a few weird things, like no coffee. You can't have coffee. But I did. I tried it here recently. Ooh. <laughs> Living on the edge. <laughs> and uh, so the waitress comes up to me, and this is new, and she says, so, how will you take your coffee? And I'm like, uh, orally? <laughs> I kind of poke fun of my own religion, but I think it's all kind of goofy when you look at it real close. For instance, this is goofy in the Old Testament. God commands the Israelites to shun all uncircumcised peoples. If the men aren't circumcised, talk to the hand. <laughs> that is some weird-ass discrimination right there. I mean, I don't think you get away with that discrimination nowadays, would you? You know, like, geez, Bob would like to do business with you, but your plumbing's a little messy. <laughs> you fix that, then we'll talk. <laughs> That's just weird discrimination. Some of those uh, commandments in the Old Testament seem goofy, but they're actually logical. Like it says, don't eat pork. Seems nuts, but it's logical because of trichinosis. Little worms in the pork that could kill you, so don't eat pork, actually logical. Circumcision, <laughs> no real logical reason there. Except it just looks better. <laughs> No, God has taste. Come on, He knows what He's doing. I'm just thinking, why didn't He take care of it before? I mean, when He had a chance, why did He wait? You know, He's like inspecting the work late Saturday night. He's like, okay, head very nice, shoulders, torso. Holy crap, is that right? <laughs> Who's in charge of this little pig in a blanket thing now? <laughs> Hell, we'll have to fix it later. <laughs> now, Everybody's getting into weird religion. In fact, stuff that wasn't religion now is religion. Like karate, it's religion now. My friend's always trying to convert me. No, come, come, it's not about fighting and punching and kicking. It's about becoming one with the universe, coming to terms with the yin and the yang, finding an inner peace. I'm like, oh, really, what'd you learn today? Oh, we learned how to crush someone's trachea. <laughs> Nuts. So I went with another friend in church a few months ago. It was some, I don't know, some faith healing church down in the south. And the guy gets up and he reads a letter in church. And the letter says, they're boycotting Disneyland. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, well, there's a worthy cause. <laughs> Let me see. Racism? Nah. Ban artificial turf? Nah. Disneyland? Yeah, those fuckers. <laughs> I don't know what they're thinking there. But then they explain it. They say, no, it's because Disneyland gives health benefits to partners of gay employees. That's the problem. I said, wait, you're a, this is like one of these healing churches. I'm like, so you want to heal people unless they're gay? And I'm like, I don't remember that part of the Bible, you know? I don't remember Christ saying, bring me all your sick. Unless they're gay. Don't bring me any leopard fags. I don't remember Christ saying that shit, you know? Or when Christ came out and said, don't throw the stones unless you're perfect. And the crowd said, but she's a dyke, Jesus. He said, oh, that's different. Give me a rock. I'll make this bastard curve. See, I'm giving him shit like that, but I really know that's not what he means. It's not fair. What he really meant was this. It's that they don't want to condone the homosexual lifestyle choice by offering these benefits, health benefits to their partners. I'm saying, let me get this straight. So you're saying that if being gay comes with good health benefits, everybody's hopping on board that boat. And I thought about it, and I thought, good point. Because I'm a comedian, I don't have any benefits. <laughs> Prisoners have more benefits than me. I'm serious. Two months ago, I had a root canal in a crown, 1200 bucks, couldn't afford it. My head is throbbing, and I'm just about ready to go knock off the convenience store and wait for the cops to show up. So if Satan, at that moment in time, had sent a gay man that worked at Disneyland, I'd have gone right to hell. <laughs> I'm 
just kidding ya. <laughs> so what else is going on? Oh, this job's fun. I've had a lot of fun here in the Seattle Comedy Competition. <laughs> this is a fun job. It's fun. My other job, I used to have a job where I went around door to door selling no soliciting signs. <laughs> This you get a lot to do fun stuff. Like, for instance, if I come back and be doing hypnotism, you guys like hypnotism? Yeah, I've been practicing. Oh, practiced in the mirror. <laughs> Don't do that. I woke up half naked in the middle of the street. Worse than an invisible baby. So, <laughs> so other odd things I do, like mime, I want to introduce a little pantomime. I study, you guys heard of Marcel Marceau? I studied with his uh, nephew, come see, come saw. <laughs> he's born to be a mime artist. This guy was born to mime. Well, he's born a mute albino. So, <laughs> saved a lot on makeup. <laughs> I'm just bullshitting now, that's a lie. <laughs> Do you want to think a weird job be? Walmart greeter, wouldn't that be weird? Wouldn't that be a weird interview? Okay, it was a weird interview. <laughs> but how long have you been saying hi? Oh, my Shit, I could have been good. I've been the trilingual greeter. I'd say, hola, and then that's Spanish. I'd say, come to the glue. That's French. It means I, how are you? So, actually, I don't speak French. I speak Spanish, but not French. I just know like three phrases. I know, come to vous, which means hi, how are you? And I know, uh, uh, deja vu, which means, <laughs> I don't know, it'll come to me. And then, uh, <laughs> and then I know, uh, menage a trois. <laughs> French I know, so to actually use my French in France, that'd have to be a hell of an evening there, wouldn't it? <laughs> I vaguely remember doing this before, chickies. So that'd be uh, like good say there. So this is a cool job though. It's dangerous though. Like driving along here recently, swerved to miss a deer and I hit a deer crossing sign. Damn near killed me. They had to do something about it. Maybe some watch for deer crossing sign signs. That did help. Do you guys hunt deer? Any deer hunters here? Woo! One. I used to be against deer hunting until a friend of mine, a deer hunter, explained it to me. It's like, well, you know, if we don't kill them now, they just gonna die later. <laughs> Sounds like something Charles Manson would say. <laughs> Logical to deer hunters, they'll even defend it. They're not, I'm not serious, they're like, no, I'm serious, and we don't kill them now. Come winter, they're just gonna starve to death. And I'm thinking, we're not letting you go to any third world countries. <laughs> we don't let those guys go by soup kitchen. If you say, you're looking kind of hungry there. <laughs> Where's my rifle? <laughs> but I finally went, my friend taught me to go hunting. We get up in the bushes, we're hiding in the bushes. And then he hands me a bright orange hat. Bright orange, like, scar your corneas, you know? He's like, here, you better put this hat on. I'm like, why? Well, that shows we don't mistake you for a deer and shoot you. So, so, so right now I look like a deer to you? <laughs> look, now I'm a human. No, I'm a deer. No, I'm a human, I'm a deer. His gun's going up and down. I mean, at what point do we put bright orange clothing on people so, so they won't look like deer? Oh, the damn Bernie's standing on his hind legs. <laughs> Wearing a black shirt and smoking a cigarette. Hell, smoke like that, might as well kill him. He's just gonna die later. 